We have here today with us um, Alexandre Philippe, director of the life and times of Paul the Psychic Octopus. That's right. So to start off, um, can you tell us a little bit about your immigration story? When did you come to the U.S.? I came to the U.S. Uh, just about 20 years ago now. And uh, originally, I wanted to be a golf professional, so that's kind of what brought me here. And um, ever since I was a little kid, I've always been writing a lot. And so at one point, I realized, you know, what am I doing? I don't really, you know, golf is really a passion, but it's not something I want to be doing professionally. And so I went uh, back to school. I went to USF for a year uh, in San Francisco. Uh, took some theater classes, wrote my first play, and eventually transferred to NYU. Um, and uh, moved to Denver about uh, 12 years ago now. So I've, I've lived in a lot of different spots in the U.S. and uh, just really, really love it. Um, so what are your passions where you usually fly inspiration for your work? Well, you know, filmmaking is, is a huge uh, passion uh, in the sense that I've always been really very much a film buff. I mean, I remember when I was like 12 years old, I would have these film salons that I would do for my parents and their friends. Uh, you know, Hitchcock and Spielberg, and I would just, just like deconstruct movies, you know, when I was, when I was just you know, this little kid. Um, and uh, I'm just really obsessed with, with the arts in general. You know, I'm, I'm a very avid art collector. Um, I love comic books. In fact, I'm, I'm getting ready to launch a, a comic book company. Um, you know, I, I, I tend to really draw inspiration from a lot of different sources because I think that's, I think that's our great, uh, you know, prerogative as, as artists is that it's not, you, you, I don't think you should limit yourself to just uh, the one field that you've chosen because there is inspiration to, to draw from everywhere. Uh, and in fact, you know, uh, just, just, you know, going to see paintings or reading comic books or uh, you know, going to a play or a musical is yet another way to get inspiration to, you know, to make a film. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think it, it, it sounds like a blanket statement, but I think it's, it's safe to say that I'm obsessed with the arts. Yeah. No, fair enough. Um, and before I go into asking you a little more inside scoops about a film without spoiling it to those who haven't seen it, mm -hmm. um, could you tell the audience a brief story about the life and times of Paul, the psychic octopus. And for those who sure. don't know anything about Paul at all, what makes him so special? Yes, well, back in 2010, during the uh, FIFA Soccer World Cup, uh, this octopus uh, became famous uh, because he was uh, basically asked to, quote unquote, predict the outcome of the games. But essentially what they did is that uh, they put a couple of muscles in a plexiglass, you know, uh, box, I guess, that they would lower inside his tank with the two flags of the competing countries. And uh, he would just pick one muscle over the other and, and uh, you know, his pick would be deemed to be the winning team. Uh, well, he rose to fame because he got them all right uh, and uh, became an absolute international superstar. Um, he was the number two Twitter trend in the world after Lady Gaga, you know, during the, you know, during the, <laughs> uh, the World Cup. So it was, uh, it was really quite a, quite a phenomenon. I think the world really embraced Paul. And, uh, you know, for a, an octopus to uh, have a 100% uh, accuracy rate, uh, it was quite phenomenal. I mean, it, it really defied all the statistics. So um, essentially, The Life and Times of Paul the Second Octopus is the official film about Paul's life, which of course is, you know, octopuses are very short-lived, you know, they only live about a year and a half. Um, and it sort of, you know, tells his entire story from, uh, you know, his rise to fame uh, until his, uh, you know, regal funeral uh, in Oberhausen, Germany, and, and all of the pop culture stuff that, uh, that surrounds the story. So it's a, it's a fun little film that I actually call a fairy tale as opposed to a, uh, a documentary. And I happen to remember Paul actually from Euro Cup 2008, even before World Cup 2010. Mm -hmm. And I remember at the time, Paul's accuracy rate was only 80%. He, I think he got a couple games wrong. And uh, did you get any scoop from the, the staff at the aquarium who took care of Paul about how did, did they train him? How did he get so accurate in 2010? Well, I, I, think, I think that in 2008, 
it had to be, it, it, it couldn't possibly have been the same octopus. And I, I know of the stories, obviously, in 2008, and that's one of the reasons why we don't talk about it in the film, mm -hmm. is because an octopus doesn't live that long. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, uh, I, you know, I, I think they decided to keep the name, probably, you know, if there's any, any truth to the, you know, to the Paul story, I guess. Um, but it, it wasn't the same one. So the, 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 you know, the one that predicted the outcome of the games in 2010, that was the same octopus all the way through, and that one was 100%. So, you know, I don't think there's a, there's a particular type of psychic training you can give an octopus, uh, <laughs> yeah. except just give him two muscles and give him the opportunity to pick one over the other. I mean, that's, that's basically it. So uh, I think, you know, the, the rational brain would probably uh, want to think that Paul was just lucky. Uh, but, you know, eight out of eight, that's a pretty amazing result. So yeah. I don't know. We'll never know. We'll never know whether Paul was, uh, you know, truly psychic or not. Yeah, but whether he's psychic or not. Um, actually, mm. we were actually very intrigued about a film. We saw the film the other day and it was wonderful. And uh, we did some, we decided to do some research on Wikipedia. <laughs> yes, very good. Very <laughs> Don't good. know how, how much we can trust Wikipedia, but mm -hmm. according to Wikipedia, yeah. uh, we were surprised to find out that octopi are actually highly intelligent. Yes. Um, they have both long and short term memories. Yeah. And in various lab experiments, octopi have been trained to distinguish different patterns and yep. shapes. And they have decent eyesight, but they're colorblind mm -hmm. and they have no hearing. So could it have been just some sort of, the, is he attracted to the shape of the, the pattern of, of the, the flag. German flag or? You know, you, you, you could argue that except that why did Paul pick Serbia over Germany in the second game? When, you know, for, first of all, it, it was almost impossible to predict that Serbia would win against Germany because, you know, the German team is, is a far, far superior team. And yet Serbia won 1-0. Uh, how would you, you know, account for the fact that he picked that Spain would win against Germany. So, yes, there have been those theories. I, I think the fact is that uh, he just got it right mm. time after time after time. Yes, there are, you know, color similarities between the Spanish flag and, and the uh, German flag. But again, it doesn't explain why he would pick Serbia over Germany. Yeah, he still has so. no knowledge of football, of course. Well, <laughs> that, that's the assumption. <laughs> he could, you know, we, 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 again, we'll never know. Um, so what was the most surprising thing that you learned about Paul while talking to so many of his friends while he was alive? And did you actually meet Paul? I did. I met Paul. I uh, spent four days with him when he was alive. I shook his tentacle. So we're, uh, we became buddies, uh, Paul and I. And uh, I was actually quite sad, you know, when, when he died. Uh, it's, it's really interesting the way it happened because I, I received uh, a number of condolence emails when he died. Uh, so, which is really strange, you know, to get a condolence email about, a, about an octopus. But, uh, I mean, he's your friend. Uh, he was my friend, yeah, I guess, I guess you could say. I mean, I, I think I will always have a very, you know, uh, special relationship with you know, with Paul and his legacy, because, you know, it took me, you know, close to two years to, to make a film about his life, you know. So, uh, so I hope he, uh, when he looks down on me, he remembers me fondly. <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't know the most surprising thing about Paul, I think, I think was, uh, quite frankly, the interaction that I had with him. Um, I know it's going to sound a little bit silly, perhaps, but there was really something about, it was a, like a little twinkle in his eye uh, that, strangely enough, I did not find in other octopuses that I spent some time with. Because obviously we filmed a number of, uh, you know, well, you can say octopuses or octopi. I mean, I think both are, both are actually correct. But uh, I, I, spent, I spent a fair amount of time with a number of them. And, and, uh, uh, but Paul seemed, and I don't know if it's just me projecting you know, my, my uh, emotions or desires onto this, this octopus, but it, it's, he seemed to be more clever, uh, more playful, more, in, you know, just really more intelligent. Um, it, there seemed to be more of a, of a soul, I guess you could say, uh, in that octopus. Or a soulful but that, octopus. Yeah, I mean, it could be, yeah, he was a soulful octopus, exactly. But, you know, it could be, it could very well be my imagination. And that's okay. 
So I remember at the screening the other day, after the screening, you poll the audience and you ask, did the film change your mind mm -hmm. about Paul at all? And mm -hmm. you got no response. And then you ask, so you guys do believe that Paul is psychic? Mm -hmm. And a majority of the audience actually raised their hand. So were yeah. you surprised? How did you? I was very surprised. Film? Yeah, I mean, usually, because we've been, we've been touring with this film now since June, and, and usually there's people are very hesitant to raise their, their hand. You know, there's maybe one or two people who will raise their hand and say, yes, you know, I believe that he's a psychic. But that was about half of the audience uh, raised their hands here. So I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe the people of Hawaii are very, uh, you know, maybe they believe in, uh, in such a thing. Do you believe it? I'm on the fence about it. Um, you know, again, my, my reasoning, you know, brain tells me it, it's, you know, it has to be luck. Um, but it is a very peculiar little story. The fact that he rose to fame on such a massive scale and kept getting it right. Uh, you know, there's this beautiful uh, numerological metaphor. You know, the fact that he has eight tentacles, he made eight predictions. The Spanish team on the way to winning the cup scored a total of eight goals. It's all these kind of perfect little story elements that I think add to the mystery, add to the mystique of, of Paul the Octopus. Uh, and you know, I think at the end of the day, it's a beautiful little story and that's, that's enough for me, you know. I happen to have raised my hand. When you oh, you have, okay. <laughs> so you believe. Well, I also think that it's a very small chance and might as well. It's a fairy tale, yeah. as you call it. Yeah. Um, well, it's, and it's, it, I think it's a beautiful thing that you can't uh, prove it one way or the other. You know, you, you cannot scientifically disprove the fact that Paul's a psychic, potentially. So that's, that's great. Yeah. You, you're, 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 you know, you're free to believe. <laughs> so for those who have not seen the film, where can we find the film next? Well, you know, this particular film now, we're, we're just now really starting with, uh, you know, uh, distribution, getting our agent out there to, to sell it. Uh, obviously, we're hoping to have a very healthy, you know, broadcast uh, run, uh, hopefully in, you know, soccer playing countries. We've already sold the film to several territories. Uh, we're going to eventually do, you know, part self-distribution. Uh, we definitely want to make the film available for people to stream or download online. Uh, so we've been talking to a company called Distrify, uh, which they have a you know, really revolutionary uh, online distribution platform that uh, we're very excited about. Um, so it's going to be a combination, I think, of, of traditional distribution routes and, and uh, self-distribution. Um, but people can definitely go to our uh, you know, website, which is uh, seerofseers.com, and uh, also look for our film on Facebook and you know, join us on, on Facebook and uh, get the updates. So, but as far as festivals go, next we're going to the Denver Film Festival. So. And uh, personally for you, as a filmmaker, <coughs> what are you working on and what are your near future plans? Well, the, the, the big one I'm working on right now, which uh, we're about to launch our trailer for is uh, Dark of the Dead, which is the uh, definitive zombie culture documentary uh, in which we're going to look at the uh, uh, explosion of zombies in pop culture and especially in recent years, but, but also speculate about, you know, this discussion that a lot of people seem to have uh, these days is, is a zombie apocalypse possible. Uh, so uh, we're going we're gonna to take a look at that and uh, it's going to be a very different kind of film, very intense. Uh, you know, I'm very pleased to say we've already uh, interviewed George Romero and uh, Simon Pegg and uh, we have a lot of big, you know, zombie uh, people that are going to be a part of it and uh, there's going to be some fictionalized segments in the film. Uh, and again, uh, our website is docofthedead.com so people can join us on Facebook and uh, you know, follow the, the progress of the film, but that's, that's a 2014 release. And then I'm working on developing a, a feature, a fiction feature uh, film that I've been wanting to make for, for years. Uh, and uh, that's a psychological thriller. So uh, th these are two of the projects that, I would say two of the main projects, but there's some other things cooking as well. Great, thank you so much. And um, 
look for Paul. It will. I'm sure we'll see him again at other festivals or. I hope so. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's. he's uh, I know for a fact he's going to be in Australia. At, mm -hmm. uh, there's this another island festival, the Cockatoo Island Film Festival, and. Uh, and a big festival in Estonia as well coming up. So, uh, and I'm sure we'll keep adding to uh, to the list. So yeah, and check the website. I think it's phenomenal with all of the animation and artwork. Thank so you. Thank you so much. Thank you.